He is, after 15 years of therapy, is now walking again, but will never have the same legs that he had before that lift came down. And when it blew up, there was acid all over. Luckily, I didn't get any in my eyes. Safety should never be taken for granted. There's a lot going on in the shop, and there's a lot to know about the safety. And if they don't know what's going on, it's a potential you know, safety hazard, not only to themselves, but maybe somebody else. Every piece of equipment in the shop has its own instructions. And you follow them to the T, and you wear the proper gear. No reason for any accident to happen. Any accident is avoidable. Working safely in the automotive shop. Working safely under the car. When working on different systems of a car, it's very important to know the proper safety procedures to use, as well as the correct equipment. In this program, you'll be introduced to safety procedures used while working underneath the car. Let's first start with how to safely remove the tires followed by work on the brake system. To remove the tires, you'll use either an air impact wrench or a four-way lug wrench. Make sure the impact wrench is in good condition before using it. For the best operation of the impact wrench, keep it oiled and the air lines clear of moisture. If moisture collects in the gun, it can eventually rust it. Remember, when using any air impact tool, you must always use an impact socket. Never use a standard wall socket because it will explode due to the torque of the air gun. Most wheels accumulate dirt. This dirt can be sent flying from the burst of air coming from the air impact wrench. Protect yourself from flying debris by wearing safety glasses. When using a four-way lug wrench, make sure it's clean and has no buildup of oil or dirt that could cause it to be slippery. When loosening the lug nuts, remember to pull with your arms and legs, not your back. Once the lug nuts are removed, you'll have to lift the tire off the car. Remember, a tire can be heavy, so use your thighs, not your back, when lifting. When checking the tire for damage, run your hand around the outer edges of the tire. Be careful. Tires that are worn can have steel wires protruding from the rubber. After locating the tire's obstruction, remove it with a pair of pliers. Using the reamer, file the hole by widening and cleaning it before plugging. Next, dip the repair string into the tire cement and push it into the tire. Pull the string out slowly, approximately one inch, and cut off the excess. This will complete the procedure. Smoking should be prohibited in the area, and any lighters or matches put in a safe place. When fixing a tire, you could also use a tire machine. First, deflate the tire by removing the Schrader valve with the appropriate tool. Hold the Schrader valve tightly. If the valve is accidentally released, the stored energy can send the valve through the air like a missile. Next, roll the tire to the side of the tire machine and line up the blade of the bead breaker with the edge of the rim. With sufficient pressure, the bead will break. Be sure not to put the arm on the rim because it will crack from the applied pressure. Repeat the bead breaking process on the other side of the wheel. With both beads broken, place the tire on the machine and engage the self-centering clamping device to secure the wheel to the machine. Swing the arm over the rim, insert the pry bar inside the tire and over the arm and depress the foot pedal that rotates the wheel. Pay attention to where your arms and fingers are to avoid injury. Repeat the process on the other side of the tire until it's completely removed from the wheel. Observe the condition of the rim for any cracked welds, enlarged lug nut holes, or any damage that would need to be fixed or cause you to replace the rim. When inflating the tire, check for the proper tire pressure as required by the individual car manufacturer or vehicle. 
Don't stand directly over the tire and keep your fingers away from the bead area as it seats to avoid pinching them between the tire and the wheel. Hold the Schrader valve securely when replacing. When installing the wheels, double check to be sure all lug nuts are both tightened and torqued. Torquing done with a torque wrench will tighten the nuts to manufacturer's specifications. During a complete brake overhaul, you may need to clean and repack any serviceable wheel bearings. To clean the wheel bearings, you'll be using a solvent tank. It's important to always wear rubber gloves when doing this procedure. First, clean the wheel bearing with an approved solvent using the solvent brush. After the bearing is clean, rinse any remaining solvent off with water. Next, dry the bearing with a lint-free shop towel and inspect the bearing for signs of wear. Remember, a bearing should never be spun if blown dry. The cages may not stand up to the pressure created and the rollers could explode. When using a hydraulic press, make sure the part you're working on is secure and parallel to the work platform. Pressing the bearings could force them to fall apart. To prevent this, place a shop rag over them. Keep your face away from the part being pressed and be sure to wear your safety glasses. Now let's move on to the brake system. Brake shoes and pads used to be made of a hazardous material called asbestos. Because of the damage asbestos can cause, asbestos-free pads are being used instead. When ready to start cleaning the brake assembly, a wet sink could be used. The sink rolls up to the axle you're working on, and then a wet solvent brush is used to brush the brake dust into the sink. A drum under the sink collects the solvent as it drains. The solvent is then serviced by a company licensed to transport hazardous waste. Safety glasses, rubber gloves, and an OSHA-approved respirator should always be worn. Never use the same respirator twice. Once contaminated, it's considered hazardous waste and should be disposed of immediately. When operating a brake lathe, be sure to wear your safety glasses at all times. The spinning of the drum and the cutting of new surfaces can easily send material flying. Metal chips generated by the process should never be handled with your bare hands. To check the progress of your work, be sure to stop the machine first. After the grinding has been completed, sweep up the metal chips generated by your work and throw them away. When using any aerosols or solvent to clean brake parts, it's important to keep your eyes and skin protected. Contact with either could mean loss of sight or severe burns. Most parts cleaners are considered hazardous waste and need to be disposed of correctly. Never use a grinder or compressed air on brake shoes or pads. Don't eat, drink, or smoke in the area where brake work is being conducted. And always use containment equipment whenever possible to service the brake assembly. When bleeding the brake system, you'll first need to let the air out of the lines. Continue the process until you see fluid, keeping it away from painted surfaces, your eyes, and skin. When replacing the fluid, be sure it hasn't been exposed to air or moisture. Moisture absorbed in brake fluid can enter the hydraulic system, resulting in total brake failure. When preparing to test the brakes, you'll need to start the car. But before doing so, be sure the area is properly ventilated. Carbon monoxide is odorless, colorless, and tasteless. And if these fumes accumulate, they can be fatal. There are a number of ways to properly ventilate a shop area. You could hook a hose up to the car's exhaust pipe leading out through the ceiling or through a metal trap door in the floor. If neither of these is available, open the shop doors. Once the area is well ventilated, you can start the car and proceed with the testing of the brake pedal. Turn on the ignition and pump the brake pedal several times. The pedal should feel firm before moving the gear selector out of park. 
Once the car is in gear, have someone remove the exhaust hose before leaving the shop. Test the brakes by stopping the car as you start to leave the shop. The pedal should continue to feel firm when depressed. Remember, every car should be road tested before and after any service. When using a lift, set the pads to the car manufacturer's recommended locations. Raise the vehicle a few inches off the ground, being certain that the safety lock is secure, and give it a good shake. If the vehicle is stable, raise it the rest of the way. An alignment rack can also be used to raise and lower a vehicle. When driving onto the rack, look out the driver's window to make sure your wheels are centered or have someone guide you onto the rack. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's safety recommendations for operating. When using a floor jack to raise the car, remember to never go under the car without a jack stand for added support and keep jack handles in the upright position to avoid accidents. Now let's move on to the strut assembly. When working with coil springs or struts, be very careful. These springs have a great deal of stored energy and when compressed can fly across the shop with great force. To work on the strut assembly, you'll need to remove it from the vehicle. Be sure to use a fender cover to protect the fender from any scratches or other damages. After removing the spindle assembly, you can begin loosening the strut assembly mounting nuts using a ratchet and appropriate socket. Once loosened, mark the strut tower for ease when reassembling. Holding the strut assembly with one hand, loosen and remove the third nut. The assembly will then slip right out of position. And you can then carry the unit to the spring compressing tool. Always use the proper coil spring compressing tool or strut tool. Secure the strut to the strut compressor tool by inserting the fingers into the coils of the spring. Mark the coil spring to assure proper alignment during the installation of the replacement strut. Compress the spring so the strut moves freely inside the spring. Remove the nut from the top of the strut rod using a ratchet and appropriate socket. Then remove the strut from the spring. When replacing, slide the new strut into the coil held by the compression tool. Once in place, tighten the nut snugly by using a ratchet. Do not torque the nuts at this time. This will be done after the unit has been reinstalled. To install the strut unit in the car, reverse the procedure. First, place the strut assembly mounting nuts back on by hand starting. Then use the torque wrench to tighten, making the unit secure. Before working on any car, you should always allow it to cool down first. Catalytic converters can heat up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, a byproduct of the catalytic reaction taking place in the converter. Be careful when working around them. If you touch this area, you can be burned. We had a car that was in for repair that didn't run properly. And on the newer type cars, if they don't run properly, they overheat the catalytic converter, which it, it becomes like a, almost like a big fire under there. Uh, and what it did, not knowing it, working on the engine, it got so hot that it, it heated the rug up in the passenger compartment and caught the car on fire. When servicing any area in the exhaust system, you may need to use a torch or cutting tool. Always have a fire extinguisher on hand in case of an emergency. Before beginning to work with the torch, you'll need to check the fuel tank and high-pressure fuel lines. High-pressure fuel lines can be made of plastic and will melt with heat or fire. Look for evidence of fuel leakage or the smell of fuel vapors. 
If these are present, do not go further until the problem has been corrected. Next, place a reflective heat shield between the exhaust and fuel system. Now you are ready to light the torch. Holding the torch securely, turn the gas on by rotating the valve and engaging the igniter. To shut the gas off, simply reverse the procedure. Point the torch at least two inches away from the area you want to heat. In moments, the area will heat to a glowing red. Do not touch this area since it is extremely hot and will burn. Using map gas to cut parts or heat frozen bolts will help simplify the task of servicing the exhaust system. When finished, be sure to shut the valve off completely. When using an air chisel on the exhaust system, you'll need to secure the chisel to the hammer. Do this by rotating the collar. Once the collar is snug, be sure the chisel is secure by pulling it away from the gun several times. Next, attach the air hose to the gun. Apply the chisel to the area to be cut and lightly guide the chisel with your hand. Be careful not to pinch your hand in the collar of the chisel when operating it. And always remember to wear your safety glasses for protection. Now let's review some key points of this program. When using a tire machine, never stand directly over the tire while breaking the bead, as debris can fly creating a hazard. When working with wheel bearings, the cages may not stand up to the pressure and could explode. Never spin the bearings if blowing them dry. When working with brake dust, always use the latest approved machinery or procedures due to the effects of airborne particles. Using the proper safety equipment and procedures will establish the auto shop as a professional service, will protect you from harm, and keep the environment safer for future generations.